everyone. Welcome to another philosophical weightlifting YouTube video. Today we're going to talk about dynamic correspondence. Uh, I, I know a lot of you may not be entirely familiar with the term or the concept of dynamic correspondence, but basically it refers to transfer of training as it relates to the specificity of training. I think we should begin by discussing the training principles. In this video I'll outline three principles, but if you look elsewhere you may find more. Number one, specificity. Specificity refers to the sporting movement itself. In this case, we'll talk about the weightlifting movements, the, so the snatch from the floor, the clean and jerk from the floor, as contested by the rules imposed by the IWF. The second principle is overload, and this can get a little bit fuzzy when you're trying to define it, but I like to think of overload as the concept of applying training stress in a way that creates a positive adaptive response. Uh, you may think, okay, well, what kind of other response would it elicit? Well, it could elicit a subadaptive response in that it's not stressful enough. It could elicit a maladaptive response in that it's too stressful. So in this case, we will refer to overload as it pertains to a positive adaptive response. Number three, variation, will be defined here as simple nonlinearity. This may seem like a very, very broad definition, but it does have far-reaching implications and it kind of has its hands in every aspect of the training process. This can look like varying sets and reps, varying load, varying range of motion, varying training days and rest days. It goes on and on. So as I listed the principles out, they were rank ordered in order of importance because if we think about overload and variation applied perfectly in a world that's not specific enough, they're kind of meaningless. Uh, Mike Isratel uses the example of marathon running. If I want to get better at the snatch, but I'm running marathons and I'm using overload and I'm using variation, and in his case, fatigue management, which I will umbrella underneath variation, then it's all for naught because there's not going to be any improvement in the snatch if I'm running 26 miles and 13 miles and one mile uh, repeats or something like that. Specificity is only so important as it indicates transfer of training. So the more specific the task you're, you're doing, the more likely it is to transfer to the sporting task itself. Nothing improves the competition snatch quite like the competition snatch with maximal loads. This video is about dynamic correspondence as it details specificity and allows us to better target transfer of exercises to the competition or sporting movements themselves. There are five key aspects of dynamic correspondence. The first being amplitude and direction of movement. Amplitude refers here to the range of motion. Direction is simply the direction of the sporting task. So we can use two exercises as an example. We have the bench press and the barbell row. They both have similar ranges of motion, but the direction is completely different, right? One, you're moving the bar up, and the other, you're pulling the bar to you. So the direction is unrelated, but the range of motion is very, very similar. Next is the accentuated region of force production. This talks about where force needs to be produced during a sporting task to complete it. If we look at a banded barbell back squat, there is more force produced at the late portion of the concentric contraction because that's when the band is being maximally stretched. If we look at a free weight barbell back squat, there will be more force produced at the bottom of the movement or the early part of the concentric contraction. That's because that's the sticking region. So if we put a band on a bar, it changes the need to produce force. So it accentuates different regions of force production. The next aspect is dynamics of effort. This refers to the force velocity characteristics of the training means as it relates to the sporting movement itself. This encompasses force magnitudes as well as movement velocity. We can see the differences here in high load, low velocity training and low load, high velocity training. Each may have different transfer to the sporting task itself, depending on how well trained the athlete is. A good example of this is cluster training that enhances the velocity and force characteristics of the movement itself by minimizing intraset fatigue. The next aspect is the rate and time of maximum force production, and this refers basically to rate of force development, what the time constraint of the task is, and how quickly force needs to be produced and to what extent. Last, we have the regime of muscular work, which refers to the contraction types involved in the movements, 
and also the inclusion or exclusion of the stress shortening cycle. All these concepts bring us back to specificity versus transfer. Transfer is the most important aspect of our training. We are trying to improve the sporting tasks themselves. We may have positive transfer, we may have no transfer, and we may have negative transfer. We are always trying to maximize what we get up a, out of a training stimulus to improve the sporting task. Again, specificity is important insofar as it acts as a heuristic to denote potential transfer. On the individual level, sometimes this can fail us. Some people may benefit from hang snatches above the knee. Some people may benefit from deficit snatches. Some people may benefit from power snatches. We have to see that they are all snatch variations, but they are all slightly different. Some may have positive transfer, some may have no transfer. Some may actually have negative transfer. Now this also depends on the execution, the sets and reps prescribed, the load prescribed. So there are a whole host of variables that can be manipulated to further enforce or to de possibly decrease transfer. There are other aspects of transfer that don't quite seem so obvious like increasing the work capacity of certain muscles or the ability to tolerate more and more forceful contractions. This may lead to reducing injury risk or reducing the likelihood of some sort of overuse injury. Now we can't say that for fact, but we know that having lower level contractions or being able to tolerate more contractions could be beneficial. Now, as far as programming recommendations go, knowing what we know now, this could consume an entire video in and of itself. Initially, I would say focus on a full range of motion. This can enhance muscular development, which may have the most transfer when you become more sport specific. You can also focus on changing force needs as you move from more general to more specific training or as you vary the exercise selection. This can look something like a deficit clean deadlift to enhance force production off the floor or a high block clean pull to enhance rate of force development. Now you're emphasizing different parts of the lift, but it may have more or less transfer later on when you solely target the competition movement itself. You can also aim to manage fatigue through manipulating the set, rep, and loading configuration because we know that doing less reps, doing more sets, interspersing some periodic rest intraset can also enhance the velocity characteristics, enhance the bar height, and potentially enhance bar trajectory. Further away from competition, you may also focus on the eccentric portion of the movements. This will enhance the muscle size, the muscle architecture, and also help to potentially improve skill acquisition. Closer to the competition, you may remove the eccentric portion of most movements to minimize fatigue and maximize specificity. When in doubt, defer to specificity. Doing the snatch will improve the snatch. Uh, granted, you're using the correct loads, Granted, you're using the correct amount of volume. There are a lot of things we could hem and haw over, but doing more snatches, more clean and jerks can at least allow us to see if the training's having a positive effect. If we get completely removed from the snatch and the clean and jerk, we have no way of actually knowing if it's going to transfer. We do know that having the snatch somewhere in the program, having the clean and jerk somewhere in the program, helps us keep our finger on the pulse to let us know if we're making an improvement. This might not be so simple if we're looking at muscle size and its transfer, or if we're looking at developing some sort of work capacity, uh, but all of that is kind of secondary to improving the competition lift itself. Hopefully that helps. I know this is just a brief explanation of dynamic correspondence and of specificity and transfer, but I thought I, I'd at least whet your appetite. I would highly recommend checking out the article that was the inspiration for this video and provided a lot of the information for it. I will link it down below. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what else you'd like to see, and we will catch you next time on another philosophical weightlifting YouTube video.